Hey there, my name is Spacebite and today I'm going to show you how I made a polished, high quality looking game in just 14 days. The game in question is Cyberpede, made for the game development knockout game jam currently going on. In this jam, each month, developers work on a game based around a task given by the head of GDKO, Xander Wood. At the end of the two weeks, the celebrity judge and fellow competitors rate each other's games in order to find out who stacks up and who stays in the competition. My game has 15 stages, 3 areas and a boss fight to wrap things up, along with upgrades, compelling visuals and polish. Want to find out how I almost went from dropping out of the competition to making one of my best games yet? Then let's jump right into it. Starting off, I knew I wanted to make something that tried something new and was a bit out of my comfort zone since a lot of what I make is platformers. So, when the task got revealed as Recreate Centipede, I flooded with ideas. I hopped in my game engine with a rough idea in mind from a brainstorm session and got to work. I started off with a simple centipede that moves back and forth, but I quickly realised that it'd be quite hard to do some of the more complex centipede mechanics like splitting. I tried looking around for examples with my engine construct tree, but I couldn't find anything that worked. So I went back to the drawing board. Who knew a game from the 80s could be so complicated? I tried to make some art to get my mind off things, and it got received really well. Motivation was coming back, but I was still feeling really down and I just wanted to give up. So, I tried putting in the centipede again, this time having it just loop around the screen, and I quickly realised I wouldn't have to make it so complicated if it only moved vertically. It may seem a bit lazy or hackish, or whatever my brain was telling me, but I've been trying all sorts of solutions for a while now, and I just knew I just wanted to put a game out there this round. So with my new mindset, work really started to ramp up. Death quickly went in, then it came to me that one of the criteria of this round was polish. So I needed to consider that quite early on. With that in mind, I put in this really nice explosion, where a decoy launches out from the destroyed centipede, spraying a fiery trail and some explosions as it moves. I finally go to a stop and do a massive explosion, while a battery leaks and explodes all over the floor. Having this happen over and over repeatedly feels so good. The next thing to take from centipede is the mushrooms. In normal centipede, the wormy boy in question likes to turn or bounce off the mushrooms on collision. Since I'm doing this the cool, no rules way, I decided to have the centipede crush the mushrooms. While this seems like it's assisting a player right now, it's a small hindrance later on. After a lot of off-screen work where I didn't record footage, I started adding in UI. I knew this game would quite likely be complex, at least compared to my previous projects, so I decided to get it in early, so I could get a rough outline of what it would look like in the final product. One of my design decisions was adding a timer. This would be to stop players from destroying loads of mushrooms and making it too easy for them. Though I think it's a bit of a challenge to handle for most players. After more additions like the level introduction that shows level number and name, and adding in the battle enemy, a more reserved kind that will kill you with its bullets if you aren't paying attention, I wanted to start getting more of a game loop in, and part of that included the shop. The shop was something that I was hoping to expand out into weapons and potions, but in the end, upgrade seemed like the option with the amount of time I had left of the jam, roughly about 6 days. The shop is pretty cool, some of the upgrades are quite useless and some are very overpowered. Upgrades like fire ray and damage actually have potential to really buff the player up and make them more unstoppable, whereas an upgrade like spawn less bumpers instead makes it so there's less gems to collect. Oh yeah, gems, right, you get them when you kill enemies or mushrooms. Really, when making a roguelike, you should make sure that all upgrades are somewhat decent, even if the bad ones are underpriced. Later, it becomes quite easy to buy out every item from the shop. I'd love to add a more expensive option in a post jam, like a random weapon or something. Well, hello there, I'm Spacebuy, and I'm here to bring you a sponsored segment. Today, I'd like to highlight Spacebuy, who recently released Eglion on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox in partnership with the wonderful Penguin Pop Games. Eglion is a platformer shooter where you blast your way through colourful and vibrant worlds while you save the earth from corruption. Go check it out by searching Eglion on whatever you play your games on. Thank you. Progress was going well, and with a few days left until my holiday away, I needed to get more work done. At that point, I pretty much only had five levels done, so I needed to get to work and create some new areas. The second area has a bit of a green motherboard look, with some spider enemies that move around the stage. And the third world introduces another reserved shoot enemy, 
This one shoots more diagonally. Time was running out. I was getting stressed about finishing. I still had a lot left to do. So I went and made a lobby screen. This just includes controls, I took some Kenny assets, and some credits to people who helped make the project possible, and myself, and a way to start the game. It's also where you'll be dumped if you run out of lives. I then went off and made the boss fight. I won't spoil it though, I've received a lot of feedback about it being easy, where you have plenty of upgrades. Still, it's a sight to be seen. Good luck getting there though. Lastly, I added in some sound and music, the sounds I found off Freesound, and the music I found off a free to use website. Those last bits I did in the holiday home, with only hours left. By the time I had tested and exported, there was only about 7 minutes left, and I barely made it. I'll never be this risky again, but I'm so happy with the finished product. I had this full game with different areas and enemies, replayability of items. If you choose to go for all of them, or skip some for a harder challenge. I can't wait to start working on the post jam with more content. Thank you all so so much for watching. I've been trying out this new editing style this video, and it's really working for my work style, so I'm really happy with that. So expect new videos in the future. With that said, feel free to comment down below which part of the game you enjoyed most, and what you'd like to see from me next. Thank you, cheers. The shop was something I was hoping to expand out into weapons and potions, but in the end, upgrades seemed like the option for the amount of time I ended up... <laughs>